The United States did not get involved in World War One until 1917, and that was mostly because of unrestricted German submarine warfare and a little bit of the Zimmerman telegram. But I'm not here for a history lesson, but there are some stuff to it. This is just how the World Wars affected Major League Baseball. But uh, the Majors were pretty much unaffected by the war until 1918, while the minor leagues were closed down the year before. Uh, the owners, on the other hand, wanted there to be absolutely no stoppage for the game due to the war. Uh, one thing that teams did do to show support for the men fighting over in Europe were to practice drills right before the game started. They would end up using their uh, bats as uh, guns, which I wonder how that turned out in 1918, in 1917. Um, the public wanted the leagues... Uh, the AL and the NL to do more into the to put more into the war effort, which they would eventually do with some arm pulling. They had a strong arm. Uh, the government ended up having to strong arm the baseball leagues. Uh, the owners of both leagues decided to cut the season short from 154 to 140 games. At this point, the season was 154 games. Uh, however, on July 1st, 1918. Secretary of War uh, Newton D. Baker issued a work or fight order. Uh, pretty much the meaning of this order was that all eligible men who worked in a non-essential uh, vacation were either told to work in a war-related field in the U.S. or have the chance of being drafted and go fight in Europe. Uh, baseball was seen as a non-essential field and uh, players were going to have to get off the diamond and get into the battlefield. Uh, this affected baseball in a very sharp way. President of the American League at this time, his name was Ban Johnson, uh, wanted to cancel the rest of the season right then and there. But the National League executives wanted to let the season play out, and they made, an, uh, made a compromise, and after Labor Day, the World Series would start. Uh, which up to this point, which uh, that would have been September 5th, uh, that was the earliest uh, day that the World Series has been held on, September 5th. That's the earliest that it's ever been. But uh, that World Series, the Chicago Cubs, it was against the Chicago Cubs and the Boston Red Sox. Um, also, this World Series was also the first to have the Star Spangled Banner played, our national anthem, and the Red Sox beat the Chicago Cubs 4-2 with Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth as their star pitcher and better. At this, well, 1918, this was the last time that the Boston Red Sox would have won the World Series until 2004. All that hardship, and they finally won it. Uh, just for some baseball players who served over in France and in America, or who got, who went into service, according to historian Jim, historian Jim Leak, Approximately 38% of all active Major League players went on to serve, and eight current or former players were either killed in action or died of illness during the war. Uh, two of the most notable players that went over, uh, Christy Mathewson and Ty Cobb, both served in the Chemical Warfare Services, and they were under command of Branch Rickey. Yes, that Branch Rickey, the executive of... The Cardinals, and at that point, the Brooklyn Dodgers, the guy that brought in Jackie Robinson. Uh, but anyway, Chrissy Mathewson and Cobb were both exposed to chlorine gas while in France, and Mathewson would later die from tuberculosis in 1924. Uh, that it was uh, uh, his lungs were just getting weaker and weaker from the uh, chlorine gas, and there was a training exercise, is how they got. Uh, exposed to it. Also, George Sisler, the first baseman that had the hit record until Ichiro broke in like 2004, I think is what it was. Um, he also served in the chemical warfare services, uh, but stay in the U.S. Over a third of active players took part in World War One, and uh, very few of them did die uh, in France. Now going on to the sequel, the Second World War. U.S. didn't join the Second World War officially 
until December 8th of 1941 after the Pearl Harbor attack. There was lend lease and everything. We didn't officially join until December 8th. Uh, the commissioner of MLB at the time was Kennesaw Mountain Landis. Uh, he sent President Roosevelt a letter asking him if they should cancel the entire baseball season. They didn't really know what to do. This was a hot topic during the winter meetings. Uh, they just had no idea what to do. Roosevelt ended up uh, writing his green light letter, which pretty much stated, I think it would be great for the country to keep keep baseball running. He was a huge baseball fan and wanted to see it keep going. Uh, the Roper Center for Public Opinion Research at Cornell University did a Gallup poll asking people if the baseball season should be continued, stopped, or had no opinion on it. 67% of people wanted the sport to continue. 23% of it wanted it to stop. And 10 had 10% 10 had really no opinion. That poll was taken on March of 1942. Some of the most notable players who enlisted were Stan Musial, Joe DiMaggio, Ted Williams, Warren Spawn, Yogi Berra, Pee Wee Reese, Phil Rizzuto, Hank Greenberg, and Bob Feller. And there is an amazing story about Bob Feller. And that was he, on pretty much right after Pearl Harbor, just drove his... Uh, truck right to the Navy recruitment office in Chicago and enlisted right then and there. Um, according to the American Veterans Center, over 500 major leaguers and more than 2,000 minor league play baseball players went into the armed forces. Uh, just uh, Bob Feller was a gun captain on the USS Alabama. Uh, he served in the Atlantic and the Pacific later on. Ted Williams was a fighter, was a pilot for the U.S. Navy. Uh, Warren Spawn probably had the most, uh, they could probably make a movie out of what he did. Uh, he was a part of an engine, engineer's group that participated in the Hürtgen Forest in Germany, one of the most intensive fights uh, at that point. Uh, Battle of the Bulge, and he was at Remagen repairing the last bridge which I think was called the Ludendorff Bridge, to get U.S. troops over to the Rhine into Germany. Uh, M Major League Baseball still carried on having full seasons from 1942 to 45. Uh, 1942 World Series was the St. Louis Cardinals against the Yankees. Cardinals beat the Yankees 4-1 in that series. Uh, 1943 was the Yankees versus Cardinals again in the World Series. This time the Yankees beat the Cardinals 4-1. 1944 World Series was the St. Louis Browns, now the Baltimore Orioles, versus the Cardinals. Uh, the Cardinals beat the Browns 4-2. And the 1945 World Series was the Detroit Tigers over the Chicago Cubs 4-3. What both World War I and World War II have in common with uh, taking baseball players out of baseball and putting them into combat and putting them, while well, putting them into the armed forces, was that they took away the primes of these great baseball players. I mean, Joe, Dim or not Joe DiMaggio, uh, Ted Williams hit 406, 1941. What would he have done in 1942? Could he have hit 400 again? Uh, could Warren Spawn have had 400 wins if he didn't get, uh, if he didn't go into service? How would Joe DiMaggio follow up after hitting 56 consecutive, uh, after it? A hitting streak of 56 games we'll just we'll never know and we just that all parts just uh fantasy at this point one thing i i feel like i am obliged to talk about at this point with the men going off to fight in world war ii and world war one this is mostly pertaining to world war ii uh, is the all american girls professional baseball league this was created by Philip Wrigley, who inherited the Cubs ownership from his dad and created the Wrigley's Chewing Gum, was afraid with uh, this war going on that Major League teams would lose a lot of money and the entire Major League Baseball system would collapse. Uh, he then ended up creating the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. Uh, there were four teams to start this new league. Uh, that was including the Rockford Peaches, uh, the Kenosha Comets, the Racine Bells and the South Bend Blue Sox. They kind uh, this league kind of uh, included 
rules from both softball and baseball. They threw underhand, but it was kind of the same. I think the infield was infield was in a little bit. It had really the same dimensions, just the field was brought in a lot. Uh, one thing I did notice was that this league had a league champion, which was the best record throughout the entire season, and a playoff champion, whoever won, uh, whoever beat, uh, why am I blanking? Just whoever beat who in the playoffs, which I thought was fascinating that they had two different, uh, um, two different, uh, why am I blanking? Two different champions, which is not that, it's, like, today we have pennants and stuff. It's kind of like that, I think. Uh, last season for the All-American Girls Baseball League was 1954. So they lasted a lot longer than what uh, went through World War II. They lasted a lot longer. Uh, almost a decade longer. Nine years. But yeah, uh, if you guys liked the video, press the like button. Uh, subscribe down below if you haven't already. That would be greatly appreciated. Share this video with all your friends and buddies, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.